Warm greetings from the high 10. It is Everyday Shenanigans on this Thursday, October 29, 2020. I'd like to bring you an update to a story that I um, covered a few months ago. This is a new indictment on a monster who is has aided in the abuse, murder of children, adoptive children by his parents. Channel 10 is the source if you need verification. Son now charged with parents in a years-long child abuse case. In May, sheriff's deputies found a young boy's body buried in the backyard of Michael Anthony Gray Jr.'s home in Halls. And this area is outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, and it is con it is in the Knox County jurisdiction. There is also video commentary in this said article, and also this will be a bit lengthy, so please bear with me. The adult son of a Roan County couple accused of abusing their adoptive children and killing at least one now faces charges himself. A Knox County grand jury returned a 20-count indictment Wednesday against Michael Anthony Gray Jr. The document accuses him... Among other things, the felony murder, aggravated child abuse, aggravated child neglect, and abuse of a corpse. Much of the indictment focuses on the alleged abuse of adopted children named Jonathan Gray and Sophie Gray. Jonathan Gray's remains were found in the yard of Hall's, of a Hall's home in May. And Sophie Gray's remains were found on the property of Gray Jr.'s parents in Rome County. And that is a little ways outside of Knox County. For those of you who, who are familiar with the uh, Knoxville, Tennessee area. Okay. The documents also identify two other victims by their initials. They, too, were adoptive children of Gray's parents, Michael Anthony Gray Sr. and Shirley Gray. While the indictments list other defendants in the case, their names have been blacked out in the indictments. Sorry about this. I don't know why this thing keeps jumping off. Obtained by 10 News, that indicates they've not yet been informed of the charges. So there are other people involved in the case as well, but they have not been identified. Gray's parents likely will face the same 20-county indictment in Knox County. They're already charged with a slew of crimes in Rome County on related offenses, and they're being held in Rome County custody. Gray Jr. was booked into the Knox County Detention Facility early Thursday record show. According to the Knox County Sheriff's Office, Gray's Gray Jr.'s bond is set at $500,000. Knox County authorities recovered the remains of Jonathan Gray at a Cedar Breeze Road home once owned by the Elder Grays. Gray Jr. later lived there. The house since has changed hands. Jonathan was the adoptive son of Gray's parents, Michael and Shirley Gray. He's believed to have died while the Grays in, in the Gray's care between 2015 and 2016. Four time records show the Elder Grays and their children shared the Cedar Breeze home with Michael Gray Jr. Now, for the Roan County case. In 2016, the Elder Grays moved to Roan County with their adopted children. In 2017, another of those children died while in their care and was buried on their property in the 10 Mile community. On Monday, Gray, Michael Gray, 63, and Shirley Gray, 60, pleaded not guilty to four counts of felony murder, eight counts of aggravated child abuse, eight counts of aggravated child neglect, nine counts of aggravated kidnapping, and six counts of especially aggravated kidnapping. They accused of abusing several adopted children over a period of years at their 10-mile home, along with the murder of a girl whose remains were found on the property. Evidence recovered during the investigation in May shows the adoptive children were subjected to abuse while they lived at the Cedar Breeze home, according to records. Evidence suggests Anthony Gray, also known as Bubba, knew what was going on. One of the great children, a 15-year-old boy, told Knox County authorities in May that he'd been kept in a small room and in a cage in the lower level of the Hall's home. He told them the other children also had been abused and confined at the Hall's home. The children suffered extended periods of malnourishment, record state. At some point, he said Jonathan became sick and disappeared from the house, never to be seen again. The warrant returned states. He said his parents told him Jonathan had gone away to live with another family. Other charges alleged. The Knox County indictments indicate someone connected to the case also is accused of financial crimes. Michael Gray Sr. and Shirley Gray have been charged with such crimes in Roan County. The Knox County indictments state someone, their name has been blacked out, fraudulently profited from adoption insurance and medical benefits. Okay. Well, that was it. Sorry about that. I thought it was a bit lengthy. So, obviously, uh, these parents, the Grays, adopted children, abused them, murdered two children for, on, on said records right now. One of the children was murdered in the Roan County uh, home 
was found on the property and another child found at the property of the son where he lived, the adult son, who has now been indicted on said charges um, of abuse alongside his parents. And now also you're hearing crimes of uh, medical fraud and financial fraud. And see, what I was thinking to myself is the fact that we know that foster parents receive aid financial and medical from the state to take care of foster children. Now, I didn't know there was any type of aid given to people who adopted children. I figured, you know, medical, depending on their income, um, if they receive any type of medical assistance from the state. But as you see, these people have committed <sighs> medical fraud of some sort, although their names have not been mentioned, but I'm assuming it is the family because they are the ones who adopted these children. And we will probably here here shortly they have committed some type of medical fraud and thus other fraud pertaining to these children and that fraud would probably be accepting any type of aid when your children are deceased such as like food stamps and the children are no longer living the fact they lied to one of the children to say that one of the kids went off with another family. Now, don't you find it odd you wouldn't tell the other children that the child left? You just failed to mention, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, John left. He's gone. She's gone. No, because you killed him. And then there's also the issue of malnourishment. And God knows what else they've done to these children, locking them in cages, small rooms. Hell, this is ridiculous. And I'm sick of these cases. Frankly, I'm sick of people. And I'm just going to be frank in this video. I'm sick of people taking in children that they cannot take care of financially and mentally. Because you see, you have to be mentally fit to take a child on. Okay? And you know you can't do it. So why are you doing it? Taking kids for the profit of money, to get money from the state. Well, we already know they're not giving you enough for you to deem beating, abusing, sexually assaulting, starving the children, locking them up, whatever the hell else you're doing to them. Is it really worth that little couple hundred dollars you're getting from the state? Yeah, I'm saying it because I'm sick of these cases. I'm sick of these stories of hearing children going into foster care, being abused by their foster parents, then and or being adopted by the same people and or adopted in general and being abused. The children are missing. Nobody sees them. Nobody hears from them. I'm sick of the stories. And it's time for people to wake up and realize something is wrong. When you no longer see children playing outside anymore, when you have seen them going and coming with their parents, foster parents, whomever, guardians, you no longer see them. Hell yeah, you should get on the hotline and call 911 and say, I don't see the kids anymore. If you see them in the school, they don't look right. They don't look like they've been eating. They're not bathing. They smell. Hair dirty. Quit playing. Speak up. Do the right things. Say something. They are children. They do not ask to come here. They didn't choose their parents, their guardians, adoptive parents. And that's the spoken word. No more of this foolishness. Speak up. Some of you, as I say, have this snitch rule about life, but you cannot just lay in the cut and not speak up on the behalf of kids. Now, certain cases you may decide you want to be quiet and not get involved. That's your preference. But when it comes to children under the age of 18 years of age, you need to speak up because they are vulnerable beings who cannot speak up for themselves and fight for themselves. So someone should be rallying for them, their livelihood, the preservation of life. And that's the spoken word. That's my latest update coming out of uh, the Rome County, Knox County area. This is a baffling case. And... It's, it's, it's sickening and it's sad. And when you look at the pictures, yeah, they look ho-hum. I said it. Daddy don't look too good. I don't want to say what I want to say. I'm just going to say some old gutter trash is how he looks. And Susie Mae don't look any better. Yeah, I said it. See, I get on one about these cases because they are ridiculous to me. They're foul. They're vile. They're disrespectful to human life. And it's time that people speak up. It is time, hell, for even these agencies to go in and do a little check 
Even a couple years after, I think you need to do checks on people who foster and adopt children. Yeah, I said it because this madness has got to stop. Like, share, subscribe, drop your comments below. Thanks for joining me. This is Everyday Shenanigans. God bless. I love you. Have a safe and prosperous weekend. New month coming in. Be time for the holidays. You all mask up out there. Stay safe. And I'll be back with another video. This is Everyday Shenanigans. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.